So let's prepare the bottom shell. Now, because I can't actually print this in my printer because mine's uh, 220 by 250 maximum. And I think this piece is 270 or something like that. So I, I to fit it, I was going to cut off the side bits, but then it still doesn't fit on the board. So I decided to cut it through the middle using a plain cut in mesh mixer. But I thought to make it stronger, what I've done is I've actually copied the center of the section and pasted that in and extruded it. So I've made it thicker because then I think what that will allow me to do is when I put it back together, I'll be able to actually put vice clamps on these bits to clamp it together while I'm waiting for the um, epoxy to dry. So it'll be a proper fit. And I've avoided these mounting holes, which is where the steering wheel mount mounts. So I've done it on the side of that. Both of these parts, the left side and the right side of the back will fit on the printer separately and I'll be able to print them off. So that's all good. So what I want to do is actually put some locating pins in there and I'm going to use square pins. So what I've done is I've put this middle section in, made it really solid. And then I've divided into two sections. I have the bottom half and the top half. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn off the, the top half for a second. And I've created some square locating pins. And those ones, they actually go through the actual main reinforced body of it. But what I want to do is I want to actually have one on this side that's on the bottom half, which is going to be, um, well, actually, I'm going to have this as the female hole. And on the other body, I've got the positive male side of it and then flip the other way. So on this here, I'm going to have another pin. This is going to be a male on my, a male one for the bottom part of the shell and the other one's going to have a top. So they sort of fit together like jigsaw. So what I need to do is create a hole in here. So I've created my rectangle pin, which I've put there. It goes through the reinforced part. And then what I do is I basically just, and I've seen this on um, Maker's Muse, which is a great site, but I just pick the shell and then the thing that's going to be subtracted from it is the pin. So what I need to do is actually um, control click. So excuse me for a sec. Now I have them both selected. So I've got the main body and then the pin and you have to do it in this order. So firstly, the thing that's going to remain and what's going to be taken away from it. So I've selected the pin and then I go up here and I do this Boolean difference. And here it's created a hole. And the other thing apparently you want to do is take off auto reduce result and use intersecting curves. And let's go maximum quality. Done. Um, let's just accept that. Oh, it's crashed. Bummer. Let's try that again. Those ones. Uh, let's go Boolean Union. Maximum quality. That gives you a project uh, that actually sticks out. We don't want to do that. We actually want to do the other thing. Let's go Boolean difference. Use intersecting curves. Take off auto reduce. Have it on maximum quality. Um, and I think if we turn up the search depth a bit, let's check that. No. Let's. Um, Go Boolean difference, um, intersecting curves, auto result. Let's leave it on precise and accept. No, didn't work. I have to go on their website, and find out what's going on there. Okay, luckily Autodesk have an excellent FAQ site on their web page, which sorted out for me. So basically what I had to do first was to make um, the part solid, which I've done. So yeah, I had to actually make the bottom part of the body solid first. Um, and then in doing that here, then it would let me create a hole in it. So I've created one little hole here and another one here. And on the top section, I'll do it around the other way. So on the top part of the shell, 
which I'll just show you now, um, which is this one here. I've made it solid and I've made a keyway here and a keyway on this side. So now what I have to do is turn back on the rectangular pin, which is, uh, where is it? Turn on the rectangular pin there and also the one on the bottom, which I think is rectangular pin one well, here. But what I want to do to make that sure that fits into the bottom part of the shell it has to be slightly smaller. So I'm going to actually set that and I'm going to go edit, transform, and the size of it, I want it to have uniform scaling. At the moment, it's 8.7 by 10, it's the length, 8.7. Um, and what I want to do, I'll take off uniform scaling because I actually just want to change, um, I don't want to change the depth of the hole. I just actually want to change the faces. So I'll go instead of 8.7, um, I'll go 8. 8. 2 and 8.2 because we want it to be quite a tight fit and we're going to accept that um, and then on here which is this pin here we actually might make that a little bit smaller as well so we'll edit that and transform at the moment that's 10 long it's 1 uh, 0.4 and 5. So we'll make it 1.3. 1.3. 1 and 5.2. 5. 5. Oh, let's go 5.1. There we go. So we just made it a little bit smaller. And uh, accept that. So now we go down to the other part. Um, which is this bottom section, and we'll do the same thing for this. So, um, next I need to make the hole in this one. So here's my join test in Cura, and this is basically each half of the wheel, and I've sunk them down into the bed, so I'm just gonna print the top part of each one so I can actually check how they fit together. So we have one that has female, male, female, male, and the other one that has, um, you know, male, female, male, female. So they'll fit together as A and B pieces. So this is just really a test. There's some weird little bits here and here that don't need to be printed, but they will anyway. Um, it doesn't matter. It's really just to see how this is going to work when it's two complete pieces. So I'm just going to do a quick test in sort of draft mode at 0.28 mils and pretty fast. And it's really just to see if the bits match up together. So let's get that on the printer. Well, these are the two pieces. So you can see the keyway there, pin, hole. And on this side, same thing, pin and hole. Now this didn't really print properly because it lifted off and sort of moved on the print bed which can happen a lot so this is when a test is good actually because you get to check what possible problems you might have when you're printing the final one you don't waste a lot of material so this works these fit together and um, align perfectly so that's how i'll do it what i might do though is i'm going to omit the little tiny tags on the side because I just don't think they're needed and they'll be quite thin and, and um, not really that strong anyway. Uh, yeah, because I think all I'll need is these two locating pins that will be able to locate the two halves of the body perfectly together. Um, and once they're joined together, I'll be able to um, use a little bit of fiberglass filler all the way around to seal it. It should be really close anyway. It should be, we're talking about, it'd be a fraction of a millimeter uh, gap and I can just fill that in and the whole thing's going to be um, carbon fiber wrapped anyway. So yeah, that was a good test. My idea is going to work.
Well, nearly out of filament, I have this much left and the other side, so there's the left rear, the other side says it's going to be 123 grams. So I'm going to weigh the spool and see how much I have left. Right, so I've wound some off the spool and we're going to weigh this. You need 123. Oh yeah, well we've got easily over that. So it's all good. Let's start the print of the last half of the case. While this prints, I'll just show you some of the upgrades I did. Basically, a filament guide and this is a filter which just has some foam and some oil inside it which directs the filament down and then here I have a pulley with a bearing in it so it has a 608 bearing and that feeds down to, into the feeder and so this gives it a really nice path to the nozzle and it runs on the bearing wheel so these are all additional parts I've added and I'll put a link down below where you can download them to print off for the ender I've also got a quick release mount here which allows me to change out the bits between a Dremel and the printer head and the laser head and even a pen if I wanted to for the drawing. So it's pretty cool. So what I've <clears throat> done with the front panel is the same sort of thing as I did with the back panel, which is to do a plane cut, cut it right through the middle, but I offset it so I wasn't cutting through the same place as I did on the back panel. So this is the front right. And also what I did was I put a couple of pins in here. So here it has a pin and a female slot. And on the other half, it has the opposite. So it has female here and male, and they slot together. I've made this hole seven millimeter and the pin 6.7. So it'll fit into the other one with a little bit of space. And it should be a nice tight fit. But yeah, that lets me join the two sections back up and they'll be a perfect match once I've printed them. Here's the left front plate positioned on in Cura. And we're gonna give this a try, I'm gonna print it out. And um, we can see it sits flat on the bed, so it's all good. I've created some supports just to support um, the pin at the bottom and that prints. But um, it should be good. We're gonna print it in carbon fiber PLA and I've sliced it, put it onto the stick, and let's give it a print. And we can see at the bottom here that this left half of the front plate is gonna take six hours, 51 minutes, and it's gonna weigh 75 grams using 20, nearly 25 meters of material. So off it goes, it's doing the screw holes first. So 6% in, but it's already looking like a front panel. Pretty cool. Well, I think bringing it inside where I've got stable temperature and building this little tent around the box has definitely helped keep the, table, the, the temperature stable, but it's looking great. It's not lifting, it's looking perfect. We're about 65% at the moment.
So here it is. Here's one side of it anyway. And came out cool. It's quite stuck. But uh, there it is. One half, and that's the key. Came out great. So here's the piece. And that's gonna slot into there. And what's so amazing is just to see the actual switch plate mechanism fit in. That's awesome. It's so slick. So after about six hours of printing, there's one half of the wheel with the keyway. Turned out great. So what's happening here is it's actually going through and doing what's called ironing, which is one of the special features in Cura that you can turn on. It's not selected as default. You have to actually go into the options for the printer and turn on these extra fields. So it, what it does is it uses the hot end of the nozzle and it just lightly rubs it against the surface to smooth it out and it goes over the whole work and smooths out the whole thing so you get a really nice finish the irony is i really don't need to do this because i'm going to carbon fiber skin and resin the whole thing but if this was going to be your final finish and you wanted the just the 3d print finish version to be really slick you could use ironing to smooth it all out it does a really good job so what a thing of beauty it's such a good quality print, it's amazing. So this is with a glass bed and uh, it's just perfect. These are the keys that I put in there. And um, yeah. It's great. So here are the finished pieces all joined together. You'll see in the next video where we get stuck into joining the pieces together, carbon fiber, skinning them, including the resin coating, inserting the brass nut certs so I can screw the pieces together, enlarging some of the holes, all sorts of stuff to come. So join me next time as we continue on the wheel build. Thanks for watching.